I, I play the uh, older gear because it's actually to me it's better better gear. And uh, I, I play flatter lie angles because you have a, a geometric advantage doing that. And I've, I've done videos on that, you know. <clears throat> but the, the but basically the, the the concept of that would be uh, well actually I have a hammer here. Okay, so this this would work. So if I have this. What, what people have trouble doing is they have trouble controlling the rotation of the shaft, okay? That, that's yeah. what causes the ball to go offline because the, the rotation of the shaft is what is, is most challenging, okay? So if I have this perfectly upright, then any rotation of the shaft would be sending the ball left, you know, assuming this is the club head, that would yeah. be sending the ball to the left or to the right, right? Yep. If it's perfectly upright. So the more upright, the more the rotation of the shaft is having direction. Um, it's affecting the direction that the ball's going. Right, right. Now, if the shaft were perfectly flat, then the rotation of the shaft is having to do with up and down. It's yeah. Trajectory. Yeah. Right? So this is more about trajectory, and this is more about direction. Okay. Yeah. So I know I know there's no uh, visual on your podcast, but if you imagine holding something straight up and down, then left and right are going to be affected as you rotate that shaft. And if that shaft were parallel to the ground, then the rotation of the shaft is going to be affecting up and down. Yeah. So well, that's therefore, simple. Yeah, it's, it's it's simple concept. So the flatter your lie angles the more you're skewing things towards trajectory issues. Now, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna, if I'm having a bad day, I'd much rather my problem be, gee, I wasn't hitting the ball the right trajectory today. Yeah. I'm still in the fairway, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm still on the green, I came up short and long, maybe a little bit more with trajectory issues, but I wasn't missing it left and right. I don't, I don't wanna have problems left and right. Yeah, absolutely yeah. not. And so that's one example of how we can set up our gear in our favor would be flatter lie angles. Another thing would be the offset on the club. I'm very, I'm a big proponent of no offset on the clubs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why is there offset on the club? So the offset on the club is going to delay the closing of the club face, okay? But because most golfers come over the top, hackers, they want that delay because yeah. they're coming over the top so that they don't pull the ball as much. Right. So a club with offset is good for the hacker that has a bad swing. It is, we could even call that a game improvement club. However, if you're a good player and you're down on the 430 line and then you've got a bunch of offset, now you when you rotate level and and your forearms are rotating into the strike and you've still got that thing open, what's that going to do? It's going to tend for you to want to come over the top to score that thing up. Yeah. So now it starts affecting you negatively if you're a good striker. Yeah. So a good striker should not have offset. So if you want to learn how to strike the ball to your potential, then you should learn to play clubs that don't have offset. The thing that's interesting in club design, if you go back and look at uh, the early hickory stuff, okay, going way back 1800s or early 1900 stuff, and you see the old hickory clubs, there's no offset on any of that stuff. Right. It's almost face progression. Yeah. You see yeah. on that old hickory clubs. And you know what? They kind of had it right back then. Yeah, I agree. They, as far as that goes, I mean, I'm talking sure. about the offset. That, right yeah they they had that and the the lie angles you don't see any upright clubs from back then no all those clubs were flat i've, I've got a set of 1940 mid mid 1940 wilson persimmon woods these are just right off the shelf stock stock shafts and whipping and everything nobody had done anything to these things the, the driver's sitting at 48 degrees off the wow. shelf 
Yeah, stop. I mean, that's that's crazy. That's 12 degrees different than today's driver. I think most of the drivers today are coming out stock at 60 degrees, 60 to 62. And as long as they are, they technically should be even flatter than that, right? Because right. the longer something is away from you, right, the more the flatter it's, it's going to get. Yeah. So they yeah. should be sitting at like 45 degrees or something. Right. Really. Yeah. yeah. So equipment. So now again, if you think about you know flat angles and offsets, so you put that into the club, stiff shafts, and I like shafts that are a little thicker, so uh, a little heavier. But because of the feel, because on my irons, I'm not trying to hit my irons as far as possible. I'm trying to hit them as straight as possible and have as much distance control as possible. So I want to have shafts that are a little thicker walled so i get more feedback coming up the shaft you're going to get better feedback from a thicker walled shaft than a thin walled shaft yeah it's just it's just the way it is right yeah it's just like playing a guitar string you can feel those lower strings are thicker and you, know, you just feel more than you can a little thin string you, know, you don't feel as much so you you have better feel with the little thicker shafts i'm not saying it's got to be solid or a pole or something i'm just saying you know there's a little nuanced stuff right don't getting too obsessed over super lightweight thin shafts you there is kind of a yin and the yang there there is you're, there's a give and take you're losing something yeah. you're, you're getting lightweight you're getting a little more speed but you're losing the feel and the feedback a little bit so you, again you got to figure that out on your own yeah you know how much are you willing to give for me i, I don't want to give any of that up yeah so um you know the, the muscle back irons it's like okay well <clears throat> Do you want to have the weight distributed behind where you hit it? Or do you want to have the weight way out on the perimeter? I want to have the weight right behind where I hit it because I hit it right in the center most every time. Yeah. So I want that weight distributed right behind the impact area. In a persimmon driver, there's a big chunk of lead that's you know about the size of a, uh, the diameter of a quarter that's just melted right in behind the sweet spot, right? That's why... When you hit that perfect shot with a persimmon and you hit it dead solid perfect and right behind that mass and it just comes off so flush and it's just like whoo you know what i mean mm, yeah there's nothing better than that i mean nice. see, i don't want to give that up i don't want to give that feeling up when i hit one right on the, you know what they we would say hitting it on the screws yeah i know i don't have screws anymore but but the thing of on the insert like right in the middle of the insert and that mass and it it's just like kind of like two things colliding just perfectly like just boom and it's just you know it's a great sensation and you get rewarded with the ball flight the ball just the energy transfer is just so so great you know with that so but the, you know that's another you know conversation with, with that kind of thing but but as far as the irons go setting up your irons i, I think a little firmer shafts a little thicker walled no offset um flatter lie angles and then the weight you know the final thing you talk about the weight <clears throat> a heavier club uh given the same rotational speed uh, of the body if the club is heavier you you don't have to turn as fast to hit the ball the same distance you don't need as much velocity you can swing at a lower velocity with more weight in the head will send the ball the same distance okay heavier means more feel you can feel it in your hands okay so that's a positive thing there and your distance control if i'm back uh 150 yards away and i'm gonna hit uh say an eight iron then with a heavier club it's going to take a lot more effort for me to propel that golf ball an extra 30 feet past the hole now if the club is really light just a quick little oh yeah i swung a little too fast in the ball you know went too far it's hard yeah. for me to feel that but i can really feel that extra effort that it takes to send it past or to come up short so you just naturally have much better distance control with a heavier club um you you, you could you could mess around with this with uh if you were to put a, a a trash a little trash can over on the side of the room okay and you were to pick up ping pong balls and try and toss them into the trash can yeah golf balls yeah you're going to be more accurate with the golf ball after yeah. 
you're doing it, you're going to get a feel for exactly because you're going to be able to put more pressure on that golf ball as you toss it through the air. The ping pong ball is going to be kind of all over the place a little bit. Yeah. A little bit, a little too much, a little short, much yeah. easier to feel that exact distance. So I'm not saying you need to swing sledgehammers. I'm just saying there's there's a give and take. At some point, there's a diminishing returns. Oh, this is too heavy, right? Yeah. But I would I would consider going into heavier clubs slightly. You know, try an ounce heavier. You know, not five ounces, but go an ounce heavier, half ounce or an ounce heavier. You know, and feel your distance control there. Maybe shafts that are a little little stiffer, a little thicker wall. Flatten those lie angles out a little bit. These are all things that are going to help you control the golf ball because that's what we want to do. We want to control the golf ball. The objective of golf is to control the golf ball. It's not to hit the golf ball as far as possible. I'm not saying, you know, I, I preach short hitting. I mean, I'm I, if, as far as persimmon driver guys, I, I, I'm a pretty long hitter with persimmon. You know, give sure. somebody else persimmon, I'm, I'm I'm out there right with them. You know, I'm not I'm not preaching to like you need to just be dinking the ball around the golf course, or whatever. And you can play, you know, power golf is good golf. You know, you want to hit it far. But um, <clears throat> these are just little, you know, little things, little things to consider. So, you know, I, I teach the students these things too, you know. Um, but, yeah, go ahead and get your 10-ounce driver, 45 inches or whatever, and uh, you just swing out, have something you just knock out there. You know, you look out there, there's no real trouble out here. I'm just going to swing for the fences and knock it out there another 30, 50 yards, or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the same thing as like having a sand wedge in your bag. It's a club, it's a specific tool for a certain shot, right? Yeah. You go into a bunker, you pull out a sand wedge, right? You know, you, you need that club to get out of the bunker. You pull out your modern driver and you, and you take a rip at it on those maybe, you know, six, six or 10 times around you know, of your 72 shots or 70 shots or whatever, you know, that one seventh of the game, you know, you have that, you know, you're in the bunker, you have that, you know, but I think it's kind of thinking about the game as a whole and playing it and having a good golf swing with the proper intentions and, and being able to draw and fade the ball, you know, at will. And all these things help, you know, play better golf. Yeah, I've I've been such a great <laughs> uh, recipient and uh, beneficiary, especially of uh, you know not only doing the drills, but but uh, taking my own gear and making it heavier and flatter. I mean, I'm six two, and I mean, I think I've got my wedges. I've got everything up to my eight iron at four flat at D eight. And it's been a revolutionary change for me. And yeah. what's interesting about the weight is, you know, I wanted to make this comment about what we work on in, in, in drill on mod five with the hand attitudes and how to transition the golf club. I transition the golf club using doing the drills and now I can actually feel the club drop. Whereas I couldn't feel it before. I have intimate, uh, a really great kind of a mind-body connection with the club head in that transition, which is I've never felt that before. You know, partly it's 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 working it and training it into my swing DNA, but the clubs dramatically facilitate that and coming in, you know, under plane uh, on the 430. All of that really, 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 that's been my kind of manifestation and how it's helped me. Uh, a lot, and I and I don't hit the ball left ever, hardly at all. It, I mean, I really have to over accelerate, but it's harder to over accelerate from the top with heavy stuff. That's absolutely you can't true. do it. You can't that's do a, it. That's another thing too. It's, you know, a heavier club is harder to get going, to get it moving quick. It's heavy. You yeah. know, you just think about. You know, getting behind a car, you're trying to, you know, push a car off the road or something, you know, somebody's stalled or whatever, you know, you get, you're just pushing. It's very hard to get it moving at first, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If it's, if it's really light, if it was just a beach ball out in the middle of the road, you just kick it with your foot and it would just accelerate from zero to whatever really quick, just poof, you know, just out there. Yeah. But it's not pushing. So when you have more mass at transition, that's exactly right. It's harder to, 
accelerate quickly, which helps us accelerate slower and more gradual, which then helps us hold shaft flex into the strike and gives us more feel and pressure in our hands through the strike, which is, leads to feel and which helps us control the golf ball for drawing and fading and shaping our shots. So that's why we really want to, you know, another advantage of having heavier clubs, there's no doubt about that. And, and it also helps slot the club and flatten the club out. You go through transition with a heavier club, it wants to tend, the head wants to fall towards the ground, right? And right. it's actually flatten the shaft out. Yep. The clubs are too light, it just, there's, it doesn't have that. It's too easy to just jump down, come down quick and, 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 and too, uh, too steep. I think, don't you think this was a commonality with all of the, the great strikers? I mean, I know that Nick, 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 uh, Nick Price's clubs were heavy. He had very, very heavy clubs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, I mean, you and I have had numerous conversation about Moe's gear. Very heavy. Yeah, Moe swung a 16 ounce persimmon driver. I picked it up. I know this for a fact because I, I was, it was in my hands. You know, I, I picked it up and I, I swung it. That's you know? crazy. Hogan's yeah. driver was really heavy too. Yeah, so really heavy. That's what Mo told me. Mo told me that Hogan swung a 16 ounce driver also. So now I know in Hogan's book, uh, maybe in Power Golf, he mentioned hitting a 14 ounce driver or 14.5 or something. Um, and that was the, what, 1948. So that may have been the case mm -hmm. then, but I think that Hogan may have gone very, may, may very well have gone into heavier gear later in, in the 50s and 60s, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because uh, Mo told me that George also swung a 16 ounce driver. George Knudsen oh. did. So he, and he said, oh, 16 ounce driver, Mo. And he's like, oh, Hogan, and, Hogan and George and George Knudsen, you know, you know, 16 ounce, one pound golf club. Yeah, that was, <laughs> say, you know? and, uh, you know, Mo was just someone that would seek out that knowledge and be accurate about it, you know, I mean, sure. he, yeah, he, he would have found out, I mean, if, if he had to go down to Florida or whatever, just to find out or just he'd pick it up, you know, so whatever, he, he, he would have done that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I just, it, it's, it's interesting, it's an interesting conversation, um, you know, especially, compared to today's, uh, the driver, today's driver. I mean, you and I have had numerous conversations about it, numerous. And, um, you know, left unchecked can really have some serious consequences on somebody's, on their, not only on their, on their swing motion, uh, but on their body too. If you're swinging something that's, what, 10 ounces at 45, 46 inches, and then you've got, you know, a, a shaft that's, it's not strong enough or it's not flexing correctly. I mean, they found through gears through my friend, Michael Neff, that you've got this, uh, this shaft droop and it's causing pivot stall even more. It's causing even more over acceleration from the top. So you're just chucking your arms and hands at it and hoping to time it up. But, you know, and then you've got this big giant head that is pretty forgiving. <laughs> you can hit it anywhere and it still goes pretty straight. I mean, I remember, geez, I remember in high school uh, playing persimmon, man. Uh, you know, if I hit it good and hit it good down the middle, I was probably hitting it about 250, 260, right? Yeah. But man, if you miss hit it, you might hit it 200 yards or 190. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big difference. Crazy. But I mean, all of these things, John, and uh, about, you know, uh, getting your gear set up to really stack the deck in your favor, as you say, uh, that's a that's a big it's a big uh, piece of wisdom that isn't necessarily talked about too much uh, when when it comes to getting better. Yeah, I just you know I noticed a lot of the guys when I was on tour that were the really that I thought were the best strikers out there were definitely playing off ladder line angles. And I could see it, that it was an advantage. That's interesting. Because everybody gets a little over the top, you know? I mean, we all do. Oh, right? sure. Oh, yeah. And I could see when those guys got over the top, the ball just didn't go as far left. As, you know, when someone was real steep and upright, they get over the top, it sends the ball farther left. You can just see it with a flatter line angle. It was very, you know, apparent to me, you know? And, you know, when I think about, there's a guy named Jim Benepe, 
and I remember Jim was not real tall. He's maybe yeah, maybe five, six, or seven or something. And uh, you know, he won the Order of Merit in Canada, won the Victoria Open. 